this year in summer at the uh, MIT Media Lab, we had the theme of uh, design in a conference. And in one of the sessions there, there was a title, The New Metabolism in a Speech. And uh, Nanjo-san was present. The Japanese people were surprised by the following. I'm sure that you're familiar with this, but after World War II in Japan, as uh, Nicholas had mentioned, Tange-san and other famous architects after World War II started a metabolism movement in architecture. And the ideology there happened to correspond to post-war Japan, and it was inspired by nature and biology. And it focused on growth. It uh, looked at cells and trees as inspiration for uh, buildings and city development, and this attracted the attention of the world. And it may be Odaiba's uh, Fuji Television building and so on, but this movement did not spread that widely. So what does the new metabolism refer to? If you ask different people, you'll get uh, various types of different interpretations. And already, uh, the theme of biology is in many of the presentations. And for the new metabolism, it was like metabolism in Japan. It was mainly inspired by biology. However, it's not just the biological process of growth, but also it looks at the loop of metabolism. I think that's where many of the presentations focus upon, and I'd like to show a slide. You don't have to go into detail into these. Uh, this is referred to as the citric uh, acid cycle. And sugar and oxygen are converted to uh, carbon dioxide and EDP. And this is something that is necessary for life if oxygen is present. And this is an important loop. And in the world of nature, if you look at it, there's always the output of someone that becomes the input of some party, so that almost all systems are created of a variety of different types of loops. When we look at the um, evolution of nature, if you uh, generate something, then it is utilized somewhere, as in the, there was uh, sinobacteria that was mentioned, uh, by Orrin cuts, and so if uh, there is oxygen that is uh, generated, then how to use that oxygen because it's a toxin is something that went through a long period of evolution. When it comes to human city uh, development or design development, such loops were ignored. And for one's advantage from the uh, environment, various resources were extracted to create things. When it's an open loop, it may simply be a matter of looking at nature and seeing uh, animals eat grass, the feces uh, becomes a fertilizer, and there's a sustainable st stability. But then uh, humans use petroleum as a fertilizer, create corn, and uh, then a foster bull uh, feces uh, come about, uh, which causes toxins and destroys the uh, environment. So it's not a closed loop at all. But if you look at ecosystems and uh, sophisticated development, it's not going to last forever. And so there's going to be shrinkage of cities or transformation of cities. So when you think about the loop or systems uh, in architecture, such uh, thinking is necessary. Next slide. In our meeting of professors at ICF, there was a professor who made a presentation, and this is an incomplete sketch of his. So this should not be uploaded onto the internet, but it's the relationship between art and design and engineering. Art, science, design, and engineering are looked at, and it's an image that has been inspired. How this is related to cities is a very difficult subject to explain, but this is divided into various sections. The upper portion shows the perception, whereas the lower half shows the production side. And on the left-hand side, you can see the culture. And on the right-hand side, the aspects of nature. So when it comes to science, 
there is the perception of nature shown on the right hand side that is converted to knowledge and then engineering takes that knowledge and converts that into function and utility and the design it brings this into society so that everybody is able to uh, take use of this and to impact people's behavior and as a result uh, social behavior is converted to perception and we go through this cycle once again if you look at the bottom then there's the design element and I think uh, two days from now there will be a design session by Nanjo-san, but this is uh, related to social perception because uh, society is analyzed and aiming is extra extracted. And there is a thing called critical design, and in order for uh, utility to be available, and this is referred to as affirmative design uh, or product development. And uh, between design and engineering in Japan, most Japanese development takes place. But the right-hand side is where the academia or universities deal with. And the upper portion is where the philosophers deal with. But as mentioned in the Nicholas Negroponte in regard to autonomous driving, there is uh, art or uh, science or engineering or design are all related as well as philosophy and culture. And it's the same with uh, companies or bureaucracies. It's very hierarchical, and uh, it's not a slow cycle like a citric acid uh, cycle. It's very high speed, and it runs in parallel to each other. So when you look at this relationship, by getting a good balance, uh, urban development or the academia or the economy should be able to go through a good cycle. That's uh, one metaphor of metabolism that we're thinking about. I don't know whether it's directly related or not, but uh, we'll listen to the three speakers, and then we'll go through a panel discussion on this subject.